techniques for using Sani's asphalt pavers. Preface. Thank you for choosing Sani's asphalt pavers. We have made this video to help you better understand and operate our products. We believe the content in this video will help you operate our equipment in a safer and more efficient manner and obtain faster and better return on investment. Basic functions of the control board. Working light switch. Switch left to turn on the working lights. Switch right to turn off the working lights. Lubricating system switch. Use the switch to control the working mode of the lubricating system. The lubricating system stops when the switch is in the middle. Pivot steering function. Switch left to perform pivot steering. Turn the steering potentiometer to control the direction of pivot steering. Make sure that the accelerator lever is on the neutral position and is in the driving gear. Left scraper control. Shift the switch to control the working mode of the left scraper. Tamper switch. Shift the switch to control the working mode of tampering. Left screed expansion switch. Shift the switch to the left to expand the screed and shift the switch to the right to retract the screed. Left auger working mode switch. Shift the switch to control the left auger working mode. Left hopper opening and closing function. Open and close the left hopper. Right hopper opening and closing function. Open and close the right hopper. Open both of the hoppers. Open and close both of the hoppers at the same time. Raising and lowering functions of right self-balancing cylinder. Raise and lower the cylinder and adjust the thickness of paving. Screeds raising and lowering functions. Shift the switch to raise and lower the screeds. Right screed expansion switch. Shift the switch to the left to retract the screed and shift the switch to the right to expand the screed. Right scraper control. Shift the switch to control the working mode of the right scraper. Getting started. Before starting the machine, conduct a check of the machine. First, make sure the main power is turned on. Then check the engine oil level. Engine coolant fluid level. Hydraulic oil level and fuel oil level. And finally check all filters of the engine. Air filter, oil filter, and diesel fuel filter. Start the engine only when making sure the vehicle is in a safe area. Sound the horn to alert people nearby. Insert the key to the ignition lock and turn it to the one position. Check to see whether or not all indicators and instruments are displaying correctly. Turn the ignition key to the three position and release it immediately when the engine has been started. Attention. One, to avoid damaging the starter, each turning of the starting motor must not last longer than 30 seconds. When the engine cannot be started, turn the key back to the off position and wait for 30 seconds before trying again. Two, if starting fails, first look for faults in the oil tubes, gas circuit, and then other causes. Three, to protect the storage battery, leave a 20 second gap between each starting of the engine. Four, avoid high speed rotation when the motor temperature is low. Five, make the engine run idle for three to five minutes to cool off before turning off the engine. Preparations before work. Getting the machine ready. Before execution of work, ensure the scraper conveyor and the auger distributor are in good working condition. The acceptable tension of the auger K and the scraper drive chain is best if you can press them down by five to seven millimeters with hand. Observe from one side of the machine frame. The scraper chains should be even with or slightly lower than the side board. Make sure that the bottom and the lower part of the vibration beam is not excessively worn, that the stroke and the speed is proper, and that the space between it and the screed and the height of the screed's bottom from the floor is acceptable. Blade bottom dead center. Make sure that the blade bottom dead center exceeds the bottom slab, but no more than one millimeter. Make sure that the bottom of the screed is not worn. 
deformed, or with mixtures attacked, and that the heating device is in good condition. Make sure that the thickness regulator and the camber regulator is in good condition, that there are no abnormal vibrations, and that all the devices work well when automatic leveling device is applied. Check the powertrain of the paver. Make sure that the engine, clutch, and drivetrain system work well, that the tension of the track, the electrical system, and the hydraulic system are in good condition, and the operating system is flexible and reliable. All of those mentioned above must be tested first. Problems must be solved in a timely manner. Make sure that working devices and their adjusting mechanisms are in good condition before the machine is put to work. Set the direction pole. Adjust the direction pole before execution of works. Put the paver straight according to the reference data. Pull out the direction pole and align the instruction chain or mark point with the reference data. The operator needs to drive the paver along the direction line. Check the lubrication point. Lubricate the vibrating and the tamping mechanisms of the screen. Lubricate the vibrating and tamping bodies manually by injecting grease into the grease injecting point on the board, which can go into the vibration and tamping bearing plane through the distributor and the grease line. Make sure all the grease lines and connectors are in order and without any breakage before execution of works. Inject grease once after each work shift. Lubricate the feeding system and the distributor system. The driving device of the auger case, bearing hanger, and feeding devices are centrally lubricated, including the manual lubrication mode and automatic lubrication mode. Grease should be injected every half hour when the automatic lubrication mode is started. There are two speed modes in the automatic lubrication mode. Fast mode, lubricate for 20 minutes every half hour. Slow mode, lubricate for five minutes every half hour. These two modes can be switched by the lubrication mode function key on the screen. Use the manual lubrication mode when the paver is used for the first time to ensure that all the lubricated devices are lubricated. Set the mechanical self-balancing device. Set the zero point. To set the zero point, make sure the engine is started and the rotational speed is no less than 1500 RPM. After installing the controller, set the self-balancing system on the master console in manual mode first and then move the valve switch on the self-balancing controller to standby and then connect the cable. Now you can set the zero point following the steps below. 1. Use the manual screed elevation preset switch. One switch on each side for separate control on the console or the screed control box. And make the diagonal arm of the self-balancing device to be at the angle of 45 degrees from the horizontal level. 2. Turn the sensitivity, the sensitivity adjustment button, to the middle position. 3. Turn the thickness adjustment handle until all the up and down control lights on the panel of the self-balancing device are off. 4. Move the valve switch to on position. Electrical heating. Screed that adopts electrical heating. The preheating temperature is about 100 degrees Celsius and the cycle is about 20 to 40 minutes, depending on the ambient temperature. Heating order. 1. Check and connect all plugs of all wire and ensure all plugs are connected well. 2. Start the engine of the paver. 3. Open the electric controller cabinet for heating. Move the rotary switch on the left lower side to the generate electricity position. Then the green light for generate electricity in the middle will be on. Watch the value indicated on the voltmeter on the left upper part of the control cabinet. When the value is stably around 220 volt, move the rotary switch on the right lower part to the heat position. Then the green light for heat in the middle will be on. 4. When the temperature of the paver is high enough, the switch of the screed heating control system and the generator must be turned off. Caution. Before generating electricity, the heating system should be in the stop mode. The functions of the screed and their adjustment. Camber adjustment. According to requirements of the road surface, the camber of the road can be adjusted with the camber adjustments devices by negative 1 to plus 3%. Adjustment steps. Loosen the outside fastening bolt with a ratchet wheel wrench and adjust the camber according to the graduation.
The height difference adjustment device consists of adjustment screws, adjustment nuts, clamp nuts, deflectors, connecting links, and slide blocks. Adjust the height difference of the bottom board. Fix the adjustment screw with a small wrench, then loosen the adjustment nut and the clamp nut. Left hand thread. Tighten up the clamp nut and fix the adjustment nut. Then turn the screw anti-clockwise with the adjustment nut turning together with it. See picture. Then two slide blocks will slide to the middle part and the perpendicular distance between the connecting links will be shorter, causing the lower board to rise and vice versa. Adjusting the elevation of the bottom board. Loosen the clamp nut and fix the adjustment nut. Then turn the adjustment nut clockwise to pull the adjustment screw and make them move to the right. Then the two slide blocks will slide to the right at the same time and vice versa. In this way, the elevation of the bottom board will be adjusted. Set the tamping stroke. Firstly, remove the entry board and the striker plate. Loosen the fastening bolt and fix the positioning plate. Then turn the eccentric sleeve to the same direction to make the stroke mark on the eccentric sleeve. Move near to the H mark on the positioning plate and fix and tighten up the fastening bolt. Caution, the eccentric sleeve should turn in the same direction on the axle and the angles they turn should be the same. Caution, after the stroke adjustment, the space between blade bottom dead center and the bottom board must also be adjusted. Epilogue. The Sani SMP series asphalt pavers are qualified for all paving works with their excellent dynamic performance, maneuverability, versatility, and flexibility. Work hard to practice the operating skills and use them in all applications. Work safety is your first priority. The public and you yourself will be proud of your excellent work. The more you use your Sani's asphalt pavers and the longer you use them, the better your skills will be. You will also feel more clearly the effect brought about by the reliability, durability, and fuel efficiency of the machines. Sani's asphalt pavers are designed for their operators. They are asphalt pavers with higher productivity and lower operating costs.